this is not the first time I'm couch surfing in Porto. I stayed here a month ago with a host that made me feel very uncomfortable. He was definitely fishing, flirting and slightly manipulating, which was very awkward. This kind of experience makes you feel like you don't want to do something like couch surfing ever again. You never want to trust a stranger, but after some time when the experience is already in the past, you start to reflect and realize that incidents like these are just part of the journey. Some people will be unpleasant, some people will be nice, some will be adorable, and some will become your soulmate. Even though I was tempted to never do couchsurfing ever again, I still did it three times after that incident and all of my experiences were full of nice conversation, cultural exchange, walking, cooking and watching movies together, exactly what you would want out of couchsurfing. Good morning everybody, how are you? It's a weird question to ask because I know you're not going to reply back to me right now. Anyways, my host is really nice and really sweet person. He's from Brazil, grew up in Brazil and then moved to Europe. So he knows a lot about like politics and colonization history and all that. And we were chatting all day yesterday. It was Sunday. He's working today and tomorrow. I have to explore the town by myself. I'm going to do a walking tour. I will go check out this very famous bookstore and also go to this vegetarian buffet that I'm very excited about. Tomorrow, if it's not raining, I will borrow a bike from him and then I'll bike around if you want to explore Porto with me you know you know what you're gonna do first we are going to a Livrari Alelo I love bookstores especially if they're unique and beautiful never seen this many people in a bookstore line according to the Lonely Planet this is the third most beautiful bookstore in the world and some people even claim that this is the most beautiful the history of Livraria Lelo goes back in 1881 when this French bookkeeper, Ernesto Chardon, I practice how to pronounce his last name, Google Translate Lady trained me, fulfilled his life dream to open a bookstore and after winning a lottery, he finally had enough money to do it. He ran this place for a few years and after his death, Lelo brothers acquired their estate and the bookstore became a publisher bookstore. Some people claim that J.K. Rowling was inspired here to write Harry Potter book. She lived in Porto and she was married to a Portuguese guy, but she said that she never went to this bookstore and people from Porto were very, very frustrated. The collection of the books is not really diverse, but they have very classic books like Faust, Romeo and Juliet, Peter Pan, Tom Sawyer, and you know, cool, cool books like that. And it actually reminded me that my very, very first book, surprisingly, was Romeo Romeo and Juliet. I think I was 13 and I was gonna play Juliet in a school play. I was the only girl in my class so <laughs> there would not be any other Juliet and I got interested and I started reading it and remember I finished it in like two days and that's when I realized that I loved reading and books were interesting. Shakespeare was my first author and he really hooked me to reading books. I got two books, one for myself, one for my friend. Even though it was very crowded, it was still nice to be there and check it out. I'm not gonna complain about it being so crowded because I was one of them, but um, there's no way of escaping the crowd. I went there on Wednesday morning and it was still a lot of people there. So you can imagine how many people wait in the line on Sunday afternoon or something like that. Anyway, it was nice being there. I'm going to eat now because I'm starving, starving.
very full. I have an hour, so I'm just gonna chill here, relax, and uh, I can't wait to learn about Porto, really, the history of it at all. It's weirdly sunny and cloudy at the same time. Yeah, I'm just gonna close my eyes and talk like this. So walking, free walking tours are never free because you have to tip the, the guide. So it's like 10, 15 euros. <laughs> Here's some info I want to share with you from this walking tour. Porto is so old that the name itself influenced the name of the country Portugal. Famous port wine also has an interesting story. If you have ever tasted port wine, you would notice that it's way sweeter and has more alcohol than a regular wine. Well, it has a reason. Before the French and Indian War, France was the biggest wine exporter for Great Britain. After the war between them, obviously that wasn't the case anymore. So Portugal started supplying wine for thirsty Brits. They knew how to make the wine, but did not know how to preserve it while sailing overseas. Many times wine would go bad and damage the business. In order to solve this problem, they added more sugar and even more alcohol to it. And that is how you make port wine. Portugal, like almost every single European country, was governed by a dictator. His name was Salazar. He ruled for more than 30 years until 1968 when he suffered a series of health problems and was replaced. Even though he did not have power anymore, nobody dared to tell him he wasn't the ruler. So until his death, his assistants and advisors gave him fake versions of newspapers every day, which carried fictional stories to make it seem like he was still in charge. Isn't that crazy? If you have seen Goodbye Lenin, that's the story the movie was inspired by. The dictatorship came to an end in 1974, with the peaceful Carnation Revolution, which re-established democracy. The guy was really educated and a fun person to be around with. If you are ever in Porto, I would really recommend doing at least two, three hours walking tour. There is a lot to uncover about this city. Porto is an interesting city. They say that 20, 30 years ago, this was a very dangerous place and you would be scared to walk around at midnight, people would be doing drugs. In fact, there's a guy sitting right there doing drugs right now. He's like literally injecting something in his arm. Anyway, this is a very rare scene for nowadays. What I'm trying to say is that Porto is kind of like a mix of the past and the future right now because a lot of buildings are very polished and very beautiful while others are not. And there's construction going on in a lot of buildings and streets as well. The town is still developing, I guess. And in a few years, it's probably gonna be like Scandinavia polished. You know what I mean? Like very beautiful, spotless, beautiful. I think that's where it's going. I don't know if you can see it, but there's also some people doing drugs there, like serious drugs. Maybe it's not that rare after all, you know? Portugal is obsessed with cork. They make literally everything out of cork and every single souvenir shop is full of things made out of this material. I guess they have a lot of it. Later, I went to this thrift store called Yesterday, the most bizarre secondhand store I've ever seen in my life and I've seen a lot of them, okay? This guy from Brooklyn runs it. He said he just picks up some stuff from the streets and then sells them and I got this glass. After that, I met my host. We walked a little bit and then we stopped at this famous sunset spot. If you're following this channel, you probably know how much I love sunsets and sunrises. And it's amazing to be in a city that has a specific spot where you can go and watch sunsets. Let me tell you that the place was pretty crowded. I'm not sure if it's legal to drink outside in Portugal, but everybody's doing it in Porto, so I blended in. <laughs> we chatted a lot and then we got back home, we cooked a little bit, and my host, Chai, played some music. I don't know what this instrument is called.
do you want to tell people <laughs> that we actually met before? Yeah, I tried to just go to the border of Portugal doing the coast way of the Camino uh -huh. because I had a few days off. I was there in the hostel one night and just hanging and I left the next day. I saw some girl doing some yoga crazy early in the morning. <laughs> And then I have a request of this girl finishing the Camino to stay at my place. Great, you know, I also did the Camino, you know, the traditional one. And I just came from this bike trip. And then we discovered that we stay in the same hostel at the same night. Yeah, yeah. And so he remembers me doing yoga. I remember him reading a book. And then that's how I know that that's him. And then preparing his bike in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Word is not that big. It's not that big. Portugal is not that big. Yeah, especially <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me stay here. You're I really welcome. appreciate that. Yeah, it yes. was my pleasure. Next morning, I borrowed Jai's bike and went to the park that he recommended me to go. I love exploring towns on a bike, but first few moments and I would say first 20 minutes are very stressful for me because the bike is new, the town is new, the signs are new, I don't know how drivers drive in that or this place. But then eventually it gets smoother and I pick up the pace. The park was really beautiful, it's a little bit outside of the city and very peaceful, very green. I had a little picnic there, had my fruits. Chilled at the river, read a little bit and then eventually left the place. Well, this is all I can tell you about my stay in Porto. I'm flying out tomorrow. Actually, I'm leaving Portugal. Even though there's gonna be more videos coming up on this channel from Portugal, those are just the ones that I haven't edited yet. Um, but yeah, I'm saying goodbye. Porto is a beautiful town, guys. It's so cute, so walkable. People are so close to each other. I definitely get the vibes and understand why so many people are in love with this place. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. I will see you very soon. And I want you to take care of yourself. Adios.